evening. So important uh, topic today, particularly from the point of view of spotters and, you know, exam, where you do get uh, skeletal dysplasia. At least one of these cases figures in every exam, whether it's DNB or it's MD or DNRB. So this is something that is very, very important. Can you hear me fine? So uh, uh, here we go. So this is going to be more or less, I'm going to cover... Uh, the the most commonly asked cases what are the findings what should be the approach basically is what i'm going to teach you rather than just tell you the findings uh, yeah every spotter one of these comes yeah, i think that is what you will observe anywhere you go for a quiz you know you will get skeleton it is it's a pet topic you know that we need to master so um, i think high time that we study this and from now on any spotter quiz you know that you are definitely getting one answer correct so uh, let's begin so a, a bit of theory that you need to know also i think um, long answers are the from skeletal dysplasia but still, if you do get a question from this, you just want to know about all of these things. So uh, what are skeletal dysplasia? So there are obviously so many disorders and there are a lot of categories depending on what is the pathophysiology. Is it a problem with ossification? Is it a cartilage issue? Uh, so that's something which... Uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of categories, but we don't need to go into it. What we need to know is, is how do we approach uh, as far as the radiology is concerned. So there are around 200 disorders which have cartilage, bone growth and development issues. Predominantly, we need to know, is it affecting the axial skeleton or the appendicular uh, skeleton? And, and uh, you know, anytime you have a doubt or you want to read more about any disease, always refer to this library. This is what is a compilation of all of the disorders which are there with the exact uh, pathophysiology, the genetic workup. Every information comes in this, which is called the OMIM, uh, which is Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man, where any genetic disorder, you know, you want to read more about it, it's this uh, reference library which is there. So, any skeletal dysplasia child will be worked up in three aspects. One is the clinical examination, you know, like for example, if we take uh, mucopolysaccharidosis we want to see what is happening to the IQ what are the dysmorphic faces what is happening to the corneal clouding uh, you know so that is the clinical workup what is the cause of mental retardation then you have the genetic workup where the, the confirmation happens where you send in the genetic uh, workup that this is the gene we are suspecting what is the problem is it treatable with an enzyme or a genetic uh, you know, any sort of a genetic treatment. So that's the second aspect. And then comes our main role, which is to analyze what are the findings. Uh, not just the diagnosis. Your role does not end at diagnosis. What is very important is to also see what could be the potential complications of the finding. For example, if you have a sclerosing dysplasia, which is causing bony uh, expansion that can lead to foraminal narrowing, you know. So that is our job is to predict and prevent complications as well, which are resulting from the findings and it does not stop at the diagnosis, okay. Yeah, PDF notes will not be downloadable. You'll be able to see it in app only because a lot of these are images, you know. So uh, becomes a bit of a copyright issue if you make it downloadable. That's why, you know, uh, can't make it downloadable, but uh, you can definitely read it in the uh, app anytime you want. So uh, just a, a nomenclature thing you want to know, which is the difference between dysplasia and dysostosis. So dysostosis is something which is related to abnormal blastogenesis, whereas this is because of a mutation. Now dysostosis, we consider it to be like a sequence. Okay, So this is going to be static. Whatever is the problem which has happened during embryology, that's how it's going to remain. And it is it can be individual or it can be multiple bones. Whereas dysplasia is something which will continue to evolve as the child grows. So this is just a nomenclature difference. And what we are going to be talking about are predominantly dysplasias. All right. So that is important. This is very important from your exam point of view. And again, in VIVA, especially first years, you will be tested this a lot that what are the x-rays which are included in a skeletal survey and you need to know this because the clinicians are just going to write skeletal survey query dysplasia now you need to tell the radiographer that what are the x-rays which are to be taken so this is a very important uh, list you need to remember so we take a skull ap and lateral view thoracolumbar spine entire uh, spine is included in ap and lateral chest and pelvis are taken in an ap view 
Now, very important, one upper limb, one lower limb AP view and left hand PA view is the reference for bone age. Okay. Now, if you see some sort of an epiphyseal issue, then we will take both sides, complete upper and lower limb, because then we want to see the symmetry and we want to see what is happening to both of the sides. Serial radiographs, if available, compare with the prior imaging. So this is what is very, very important that you know what is to be done in a standard skeletal survey. Okay, so this is important. Now come to the real deal, which is going to be the approach. So this is what is most important for you. So first step that we have to do is to see whether it's a proportionate short stature or is it a disproportionate short stature, right? So that's very, very important. So if it is a proportionate short stature, like you see in, in red, in the first image here, you can see that it is a proportionate short stature. Then what do you do next? So the first step in evaluation of a short stature child, and this is something that uh, the clinicians will also assess. So proportionate versus disproportionate is the first step. If it is proportionate, what do we do next? Anybody wants to tell me? Kya karna hai? Do I want to do a skeletal survey here? don't want to do a skeletal survey. I only want to do the bone age assessment. How do we do the bone age assessment? What one x-ray will you ask for? Left-sided wrist. So this is where we take a left-sided wrist for bone age. Why? Because if it is proportionate short stature, now what are the causes here? So what I want to know here is what is happening to the good. What is happening to the bone age versus chronological age? So if bone age equals chronological age, what is the likely diagnosis? Something that we have studied in pediatrics. If it is equal, matlab, scope hi kam hai. Bone age is equal to chronological age. This child is going to remain short. Why? Because parents are short. So this means that this is familial short stature. So this is familial short stature when it is equal. But if your bone age is lesser than chronological age means it, it there is scope, right? It is pathological. So here what you need to remember are two causes. One, it is constitutional. Constitutional delay is the most common cause of short stature. So this is something which is the most common cause wherein the bone age is still lesser, meaning there is scope. Abhi bhi scope hai, height bad jayega. It is just a constitutional delay or this is where the hormonal issues come in. So any issue like hypothyroid or you have growth hormone deficiency, you know, so any endocrine abnormality comes in here. So this is what you want to remember that my only job in a proportionate st a short stature is to do the bone aging, right? So this is done. Real skeletal dysplasias will present as disproportionate short stature. So this is where you kind of narrow down that, that are you in the short stature story or are you in the skeletal dysplasia story. If it is disproportionate, now we are definitely sure that it is a likely dysplasia and we got to do a skeletal survey. So this is where my next step is going to be a skeletal survey. Here, there can be two kind of disproportionate short statures. One is a short trunk. So what you see in this first baby schematic is a short trunk dysplasia. The prototype of a short trunk dysplasia is mucopolysaccharidosis. Okay. On the other hand, what you see in the second baby here is a short limb dwarfism. The prototype of a short limb dwarfism is achondroplasia. Right. So, this is the approach in a gross child, you know. So, this is the first thing. This is what clinicians are doing. What are you doing now? So, let's say we have a short limb dwarfism. Now, we need to see is it proximal bone, is it distal bone or is it the extremities or the acral bones. So, if the proximal bones are shorter, like in this case, you can see that the femur here or the humeri are shorter. So, what is this called? This is called as rhizomelic shortening, isn't it? So, this is what we call as rhizomelic shortening and rhizomelic shortening is seen in one achondroplasia. That's the prototype here. It can also be seen in a variant of chondrodysplasia punctata, which is the rhizomelic type and thanatophoric dysplasia as well. So, just get used to these terms. We'll study this in detail. Then you have mesomelic. Mesomelic shortening means that the distal aspect is shorter. Proximal shortening nahi hai, distal shortening hai. Iske do rare subtypes hai or do rare examples hai. Ellie Van Creveld and Robinov syndrome. Ellie Van Creveld will also have a short thorax, will also have a narrow thorax and can also have heart disorders, okay? So this is mesomelic. And then I have acromelic. 
acromelic means the hand. You can see here that the hands are going to be shortened and uska naam hi hai acromicric dysplasia. Very, very rare. Okay, so this is how we have to approach short stature in general.